Hi, I'm Jonathan Holton Cohen, and we're here at Jerry's Music Shop in South Hadley. And today I'm going to show you how to assemble the saxophone. So first, just take the saxophone out of the case. I recommend that you take it from the bell, rather than taking it from these side keys or these palm keys here. You have, if you grab it from any of these other locations, you have a possibility of bending the instrument and causing potential damage that might need to be repaired. So instead, when I handle the instrument, I grab it from the bell here. It's nicely connected here by a body brace that protects it from shaking around too much. I then will take my saxophone neck strap, and the first thing I will do is hook it to myself. That way, I have even more security in the next steps that I'm going to undertake. You should always use an end cap. So this end cap is here to protect uh, the instrument's octave mechanism from bending. If this end cap is not here, this can bend forward and, and break, causing an ex the need for an ex expensive repair. If the cap is here, it may bend a little bit, but not so far as to break, and it can be later fixed. They're very cheap, so I recommend purchasing one if you do not have one. They can be just about two dollars or so. After removing the end cap, the next thing that I do is I take the neck and I insert it into the top of the saxophone body. Now it may be a little bit stiff, and that's alright. If it's really stiff, you can consider applying a little bit of cork grease to this neck tenon here. Make sure you don't put so much on that it's gloppy. Just a tiny bit and smear it around with your fingers, and then make sure you wipe your hands off afterwards because you will have greasy fingers. Then you can insert it much easier, more easily, into the top of the saxophone. Always remember to screw in the next screw here. And do it rather tightly. Not so much that it feels like it might break, but enough that it is snug. You don't want there to be any leak around here. If it is not screwed in properly, the neck may move, and it also may cause some air to come out through here, causing an inefficiency that may cause problems uh, for you as you play. The next thing is to find your cork grease. These also are very cheap and they're invaluable. I recommend putting on cork grease each time you put together the saxophone. If you put together your saxophone five times in a day, you probably won't need it by the end. But at least once a day, preferably the first time you put it on. When you put on cork grease, make sure that you put on just a little bit here. You don't need to put so much cork grease on that you have gobs of cork grease all over. Then you can take your finger and smear it around so that it's just a very thin coating here. After that is complete, then you find your mouthpiece. My mouthpiece goes on the neck just so. And your reed. So you can take the reed, you always want to make sure it's wet before you put it on the mouthpiece. So once your mouthpiece is in position, you then need to attach the ligature and reed. There are several options for ligatures. Yours may look like this. In this case, the ligature goes on this way. The screws are on the bottom and they're on the right side. And you slide the reed in from the top. I recommend some people will actually put the reed on first and then the ligature, but that's very dangerous and I've lost many reeds due to slicing my reed with my ligature. So I recommend you put the ligature on first and then slide the reed down this way. Then I use my fingers to guide it into position. I want to make sure that it is absolutely straight. The ligature doesn't quite fit, you want to make sure that it's unscrewed enough, and then you may need to reposition again. The tip of the reed should be below the tip of the mouthpiece. You should be able to see just a little bit of the tip of the mouthpiece above, but it should not be so far down as to see a large gap. So just so. Then you want to make sure that the ligature is fastened below this bark line where the reed has been filed. And you screw in as such. 
there's no reason to crank it on so hard, but you do want it to be snug. So I'm not screwing it completely, but I am just ensuring that they are tight. Then you will want to make sure that the mouthpiece is in line and very straight with the rest of the instrument. You can take a look at the S or for Salmer instruments or any other decal that might come from a different instrument and line it up very precisely with the middle of the mouthpiece. You can also look at it this way and see if the reed is perpendicular to the body of the instrument. So this, for instance, would be incorrect, as with this, but if I line it up, this might be just fine. The ligature with which I've demonstrated may be the one that you use. However, there are other options for ligatures as well. This ligature is made by Charles Bay, and it is actually upside down compared to this one. You can tell because the way the ligature goes on is determined by uh, which orientation it is in when the screws are on the right side. So this would be contrary to the manufacturer's recommendation. This with it. Here, the screws are on top. Here's another kind of ligature made by Rovner, and it's made out of a leatherish material, and it has plates at the bottom. So these ligatures also are screwed on from the right side. So to use mine, I would slide it on this way, again, just like with the other. Put the reed on. And we're all set to go.